Hey everyone, this is video number 3, where I'm refactoring tests, showing an example of Cypress vs. Playwright. I'm looking at the last test that skipped for the customers. And I'll show why it's skipped, because it's actually wrong. And I'll show why it's wrong. Why don't we start running it by itself? So we'll say only. Let's move it to the left. I have an app running, customers. And what this test does, it creates a new user by entering information, clicking save, and then confirming that uh, that user is there and it can be deleted. So right here, it finds a customer name with max and then a random string. Then it clicks edit, goes back to the edit form, deletes the user, confirms it, and then confirms that that user is no longer in the list. And it goes through several pages. Notice that there are three pages in this app right now, and you have to check all of them to confirm that the user has been deleted. Okay, so why don't we look at the code in this test a little bit? So one advice I can give you, you don't have to come up with like random strings like this. Uh, Cypress includes low dash, so anytime you need a random string, for example, I would do the following. Let's say Max Smith, and then I would say Cypress low dash random and upper limit, let's say six. So one with six zeros. And, uh, you know, low dash random is pretty powerful. You can give lower upper limits, make it a Boolean, but, but you get the point. So in this case, we're gonna enter, you see Smith 692810. Okay, um, one thing you might have noticed as you go through the pages, it constantly has to keep scrolling because our viewport is a little bit too short for this application. So just for this test, we can increase it right here. So viewport height, let's make 800. Because right now it's 660, so I think extra 150 pixels will make it perfect. Enter. Okay, so now there is no more scroll, so we can see the whole thing. Excellent. So I was looking at this test, and I was looking at the code in the page object for the customers. And, you know, the page object is fine. And I noticed something weird. There is a function check page, and then there's a function to go to the next page. So you write, you know, a little bit of a custom uh, code in the page objects to kind of manipulate the page, click next back, and so on. And I was like, that doesn't look right. And one of the things that I suggest in a test when you write a complex algorithm is to see it fail. So right now we're using full name, right, right here. What if you give a name but is not there? So it's Joe Smith you probably expect it to succeed, right? That name for sure is not there. Perfect. What about something like Paul Sullivan, a name that's on the last page? If you give Paul Sullivan, then you expect it to be found and the test to fail. Let's see it. Okay, go through the pages and notice the test actually succeeded, right? We are verifying that the customer does not exist, but Paul Sullivan is actually on the last page. How uh, we can find it. What is it doing? So it deleted. Let me just rerun it because it looks a little bit weird. Okay, notice it, it completely messed up, right? So let's look at the code. Uh, so this is how we check the page. It gets all the names from the name column. Let's say Paul Sullivan, Tim Zabo. Uh, converts it to an array and checks if a customer is the same as the text content. Well, the text content, you should be careful about that because if an element includes other elements, that could be incorrect. So why don't we do the following? We can say right here, let's say, actually, let's just print it right here. We're gonna return it, but we'll say console log and we'll just print the text content, okay? Okay, so look at the names and you see them a little bit offset right from the start. Basically, the text content in this case includes white space. So let's look at this. Notice Paul Sullivan includes spaces before and after. So if you use strict equality, 
you miss it completely. So what you have to say, maybe if it includes the customer. So in this case, no, ah, let's ignore it. It complains because it could be null, but it's fine. We know these are all string elements. Okay, perfect. So notice right now we failed on the last page because Paul Sullivan was there. So we fixed it, but not so fast. How about something that's on the first play, uh, page, right? Like Hugo Brand. Will we detect that Hugo Brand is there and fail the test? Notice we did not detect it, even though it's there, right? We completely missed it. And we missed it because the algorithm right here goes to the next page immediately rather than checking the page first and then going to the next page, right? So no names on the first page are actually checked. All right, um, another observation that I want to just bring it right now is this. Notice when the page just loads, it doesn't have any customers, so it doesn't show the list. Initially, it shows a loading message and then the list arrives. So keep this in mind. Okay, so why don't we rewrite this a little bit better? One of the things why I encourage functional programming is that you don't have to write all this algorithm where you can make an easy mistake like this, where you go to the next page before you check the first page. This is why I will bring a couple of plugins that I use a lot. So Cypress Recurse, because we're writing a recursive algorithm that checks each page until we go to the last one and the button next is disabled. That's one. And then Cypress Map, and I'll explain why in a second. All right. And right here, we're going to import Cypress Map. So we'll get all the commands from there. And then we're going to import recurse function from Cypress recurse. And instead of writing it, I'll just code it right here. So here's what we want to do. We want to recursively check all the pages. And the first function is the one that will check the page. So we're going to say Cy test ID or customer. And what I will do is I'll say uh, full name. And I'll say should not exist, right? And by the way, I already modified the tested custom command to accept optionally a text. And if you give a select and a text, it will use site contains. Okay, so should not exist. And then I'm going to return site test ID uh, button. What's the button? Selector button customers next button. And I cannot click on it. Uh, instead, I have to say invoke is enabled. So what this will do, it will yield the enabled value from the button. And it will go right here in a predicate. And this will tell us when we can continue, right? And we can just return enabled. And then recursive argument will go do something, like check the next page. But we can, can just leave it there. What we have to say is a function that actually will click on the button to go to the next page, and then the test ID will be uh, checked for our customers. So we'll grab this button. We know it's enabled. Okay. Uh, ignore this for now. We can update this command. So this will be text string right here. Okay. So right here, we'll grab the button and we'll click on it. Okay, so this is our recursive algorithm. There are some details, but we'll get to that. Notice we're going page by page. And the only thing we haven't done is... Wait, wait, wait. Did we write the final uh, condition correctly? Disabled. Let's return the value. Okay, let's see it again. Okay, perfect. So finish successfully. We have a couple of extra log messages. So what I like doing here is to just say log finished checking the pages. And another thing we can do, we can give maximum timeout, let's say 10 seconds and give a delay between clicking on the next page 500. And I want to do it so that you can see some of the problems in this particular app. All right, so let's go to the beginning. Once we delete it, right 
here's our initial thing, right? We were checking on the first page if max myth random number is not there. But notice we're still not even on that page. As I explained, the first very first check might not have a data. My, the data could be still loading. So what we want to do here is we want to say test ID row customer, and we can just leave it there, right? We want to confirm that when we're checking the page, there are some customers element, right? But we're not looking at a loading message. So we're checking too early because this is a negative assertion and it can pass for many reasons as opposed to positive assertion that can only pass when element is there. Okay, so now when we're checking Max Smith, notice we're on the first page, so it's correct. Okay, another thing, when we are clicking on the next button, notice what happens right here. It was on the first page, when you click, and it shows two. So in this particular Angular application, the way it works, the page number can change, and yet the list st still shows the previous values. And it's really, really frustrating right and it's hard to deal with so what we can do right here is you know grab the reference to the original list okay then click on a button and then make sure that uh, the values change right so imagine you are looking at you know Leticia and when you click and it becomes Samantha so you know that the new list is there unfortunately you cannot rely on text because you might have duplicate entries, you can rely on actual DOM elements. The original code shows how to do it yourself, right? But if you're using Cypress map, I have something prepared for this. So we can do the following. We can get the first element and we can use from Cypress map command called as env, and it takes that jQuery object and stick it into Cypress and object. Then we click and then we can say detach just and we can say first row. So before we click, we save a reference to the element. Then we do the action click and then Cy detaches comes from Cypress map and it's a query. It will retry and retry until the element is no longer attached to the page. And then we know the second page or the next page has finished rendering. Okay, let's see this. And let's look at the initial one. So Max Smith is not there. We grabbed the first row element. We clicked on the button. Notice the button changes and yet the list stays on, but then detaches first row runs and notice what happens in between. By the time detaches finishes, we have a new list. We click on the next button to go to the third. We have Samantha, but once Samantha element detaches, we have Paul, and then everything is correct. So just to summarize, don't try to reinvent common algorithm. Grab Cypress recurs, and you'll be able to write tests that do something in Cypress until some condition becomes true easily with a lot of parameters and a lot of control. Uh, use the bundle Cypress low dash, especially for randomness, for utility functions like this, Cypress identity would be the same equivalent code. Think about what your list is rendering when you are checking it, because especially when you use negative assertions like should not exist, they might pass for a wrong reason. And finally, I kind of delayed writing this refactoring because I had to do a couple of, you know, debugging expeditions into the code and see why this app behaves the way it behaves. And I summarized what I have found in a blog post called Solve Tough Pagination Cases Using Cypress, where I kind of talk about the application loading slowly or the page transitions going uh, slowly and how to solve them using Cypress. So this blog post will be a good companion to this video. Take care.